In this video, we're going to talk about degree sequences. Um, so we've already talked about what degree is. So let's start out by considering this graph, um, this teal graph, and labeling uh, every vertex with its degree. So remember, the degree of a vertex is the number of edges that go into that vertex. So the degree here will be 3, the degree here will be 4, the degree here will be 3, here it will be 2, here it will be 4, because remember we count both ends of a loop in the degree. Here it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and here 2, and here 4. After you know the degree of every single vertex, a degree sequence um, is generally written in non-increasing order, which means you want to start with the biggest number and then you just list all the degrees. So for here, this graph, the degree sequence will be 6, and then 4, 4, 4, right? We take it 6, 4, 4, 4. And then we've got 2 degree 3s and 2 degree 2s. So we round out our sequence with 3, 3, 2, 2. Okay, so this is the degree sequence for this graph. Generally, you just write them as a list separated by commas. And remember, you want to start with the biggest one. So they should be non-increasing. So it's okay for numbers to repeat, but they should never get bigger as you go left to right. All right, that's what a degree sequence is, and in general, it's not very hard to find, right? If you have a picture of a graph, you can just see what all the degrees are, and you write the degree sequence down. So that's not really what makes them interesting. Um, what's interesting is to consider what degree sequences are graphical. Okay, so a degree sequence S is called graphical if there's some graph such that S is that graph's degree sequence. Okay, so let's just consider this for a second. Um, so let's look at these two here uh, in yellow. Which of the following degree sequences are graphical? Okay, so here we've got one. And is it possible that we have a degree 4 vertex, a degree 3 vertex, a degree 3 vertex, degree 3, degree 2, degree 2, and degree 0? Or similarly, part B, is it possible that we have three vertices of degree 3 and one vertex of degree 1? Well, the easiest test for these sorts of things is, if you remember, the first theorem of graph theory, which was a section or two ago, tells us that if you sum up the degrees of all the vertices, you should get an even number. Or, a very related result, is that there has to be an even number of odd degree vertices. So how many odd degree vertices do we have here? One, two, three. Well, it's impossible for us to have three vertices of odd degree. Okay, so here in this one, this is not going to be graphical. Um, it has an odd number of odd degree vertices. And that would be perfectly fine justification here, because we know the first theorem of graph theory tells us that you have to have an even number of odd degree vertices, and this one doesn't, so it must not represent a graph. Okay, well here we do have an even number of odd degree vertices, right? All four of these have odd degree. So you might think of for a second about whether, you might try pausing the video and constructing a graph that fits this. I'll go ahead and tell you that this is graphical, there is such a graph um, for which this is the degree sequence, so you might try pausing the video and trying to draw one. Okay, if you paused it, great. If not, we're going to go ahead and construct a graph. Okay, so we know since there are four numbers in our sequence, there are going to be four vertices. Okay, so we want three of them to have degree three and one of them to have degree one. Okay, so we'll make this one our degree one. So no more edges can go here. Um, and now this has degree three. These both have degree one. Now they both have degree two. Now they both have degree three. So 3, 3, 3, 1. And this isn't the only graph, so you may have drawn something differently, um, and that's okay. And it turns out that that's really the only test to determine whether something is graphical or not. So if you take the sum of every number in the degree sequence and you get something that's even, or in other words, if you have an even number of odd degree vertices, then it's going to be graphical. Your degree sequence is going to be graphical. Okay, so let's do a slightly more complicated example. So 
<clears throat> it's just more complicated because there are more numbers. But determine whether or not S is graphical. If it is, draw a graph G whose degree sequence is S. Okay, so we've got 5, 4, 4, 3, 3, 3, 2, 2, 1, 1, 0. So how many odd degree vertices do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so there are 6 odd degree vertices, which means this thing should be graphical. So let's take their sum. 5 and 4 would be 9. 9 and 4 is 13. 16, 19, 22, 24, 26, 27, 28. So the sum of all these is going to be 28, which is even, right, which means that it should be graphical. Okay, so in general, how are you supposed to draw the graph of one of these things, right? I mean, it might be kind of hard to figure out, okay, well, what is a graph that's going to fit all of these things? And you don't really want to do this by guess and check. Um, it turns out that there is a way that's going to work every single time. And that is, you want to pair up all your odd degree vertices. Okay, so let's write our odd degree vertices over here. So odds. We have 5, um, 5, and 3, and then we've got 3, and 3, uh, and then we've got 1, and 1. So all I'm doing here is going through and writing them in pairs. So we're going to try and pair up our odd degree vertices. So you can see the first two odds, 5 and 3, the next two odds, 3 and 3, the next two odds, 1 and 1. And so by the way, here I've got my 11 vertices written down because there are 11 numbers in this sequence here. And remember that every number represents the degree of an individual vertex, so we're going to need one vertex for each of these numbers. And now the reason I've paired up my odds is because what I'm going to do is just say, okay, this is going to represent my 5 and my 3, and I'm going to connect those, and this is going to represent my 3 and my 3, and this is going to represent my 1 and my 1, and all of these are going to be the leftover even ones. Now why did I do this? It's because I can now add loops to make this whatever it's supposed to be. Okay, so let's say that, right, remember, this was going to be my 5 and my 3. This was going to be my 3 and my 3, uh, 1, 1. And then the evens, right, this will be a 4 and a 4. And then we have a 2 and a 2 and a 0. Okay, so how are we supposed to finish this out? Well, right now, both of these have degree 1. So if I can add an even number of edges to them, then I'll get what I want. So like, for example... Now this vertex has degree 5, and I didn't affect any of the other vertices. Similarly, now this has degree 3, and I didn't affect any of the other vertices. Right, And I can just add loops to add an even number to each of these remaining degrees. Okay, now this is 1 and 1, so it's done. But for 4, right, add a couple of loops. 4, add a couple of loops. 2, add one loop. 2, add one loop. And here's my graph. Okay, and this is always going to work. So what you want to do is divide your vertices up into, um, you want to pair up all your odd vertices, and then you're going to connect, this is called a matching, you're going to connect all your odd vertices together just to be a single edge, and then you can just draw in loops to finish the rest of the picture. So this question can get considerably more difficult, um, although not impossible, if you want to know if the degree sequence represents a simple graph. So remember, a simple graph is one without any loops or multiple edges. So that's slightly more complicated, um, but we're going to leave that for another video. So that's all for now.